how you doing today um you know uh the bright light is affecting my eyes they make my eyes it makes my eyes water when i look into a bright light and that includes the screen of my camera so i thought maybe um coming into this darker room would help and also keeping the light further away from my face helps an awful lot um I'm basically doing a little bit better than yesterday, but not by much. Um, I have the appropriate gels and liquids for my eye. I noticed that um, it's it's all up to what I eat and how much I drink. Um, I need to drink lots of water, and I also need to take in some more vitamin E products. Um, for instance, red pepper and vegetables of uh, many sorts. And um, I, I've gone over it in a couple of videos recently. So I, it, it's amazing that I just did content on that. And um, all the things that I recommended for a better eyesight apply to me now because, um, you know, in case you're... Uh, tuning in for the first time or first couple of times, I have developed a sunburnt um, eyeball or eye lens uh, from driving around uh, without proper sunscreen. Um, and that's not skin. I'm not talking about my face. I'm, as you can see, my face is pretty much white. I'm talking about my eyes. Even though I wear glasses, it's not enough to counteract that blinding sunlight that hits the corners of my eyes so intensely. And so um, I was warned by my uh, eye surgeon many years ago not to ever have direct sunlight contact my face, especially while driving, because it could cause me to go off the road. Um, even though I have perfect eyesight, I, I can see every little detail. I cannot handle that sunlight in my face. Um, 
I, I, you know, for a, a good amount of time, I, I felt a burning sensation right near my eye and the skin felt hot to touch as well. So, um, I, I'm not, uh, I'm not sure I'm on the road to recovery yet, but it does feel better. And I know that when I take um, um, an aspirin or, or a muscle relaxant, a muscle relaxing aspirin, I don't have drugs in here, um, my eye feels better. I did bang one of my eyes about a month ago at my car, that's been happening. And it could be that it's healing on the inside. I get crusty particles on my eyelashes and I have to keep brushing them away. It's very irritating and I, I fear I may have to just break down and go to a doctor soon because um, I had to end up canceling an appointment that I had for today because I don't wanna be out there on the road with that bright sun and with the snow, it's double exposure. So I can't begin to tell you how irritating and inconvenient it is to have um, this condition. And it's not um, something that's going to pass. With every day that goes by that I don't shield my eyes properly, it's just going to continue. It's something that's uh, with me all the time because I've had uh, eyelid surgery. So, and so um, I thought I would take this opportunity to tell everybody uh, what's been going on with my, you know, my eye health situation. Um, I, I'm fine. It's just that I've had, you know, the sunburn going on. And so that has, um, uh, caused me to dig around a little deeper and see if I can come up with a solution. And so I think I might have done just that. And so what I came up with, guys, is that I have decided that even though I've been loving following the start solution um, since the fall, my reasons for preferring that at the time over the vegetarian program was that uh, it was new to me and I wanted to see if it would work. It did work. Um, I did see good results and I felt even better than before I had ever felt. And um, the thing is, my only peeve about it is that it is, um, how do I say this? It's sort of too ethical for me. Um, not that I don't like the ethics. I do like the ethics going on. It's a true vegan diet. And so I think it's wonderful for vegan eaters who have no problems following that sort of a meal program. However, for me, um, that strict um, vegan program caused me to suffer fallouts due to extreme and excessive dryness. And that is exaggerated by this um, monstrosity of a poor air quality um, condition that I live in. Most people, because it's winter, it's dry, and um, ventilation, no matter how good or modern or clean, is not nearly as good as being out under fresh air, um, along the coast of a beautiful beach, you know what I mean, on a humid day. Um, I'm not used to um, spending all my winters here at home. I'm used to being abroad. And so this, for me, is a relatively new situation. I can't cope with the winter. I can't cope with the air. I can't cope with that sun beating on my face. Um, double exposure with the glass and the snow. It's, it's much worse in the winter than it is in the summer, honestly. And so um, the vegan diet or the starch solution for now is going to be put on a shelf. And so um, the truth about the starch solution is this. It, it doesn't allow for animal protein or fats. And although I do normally 
abstain from animal protein because I don't like the way that it makes me feel. I need the fats. I, I, I don't need fats on a daily basis, but I do need some fats. My body is um, reacting adversely to all this dryness. I don't know how people get around it. Um, how can a, a human body function properly without any fat whatsoever? I'm trying to get to the bottom of it. And, you know, um, it's too ethical. Uh, the starch solution would be much better for me if it had a, more of an incorporation of maybe some sunflower seeds and nuts. I know that it does allow for the occasional nut and sunflower seed, but I'm not talking about occasional. I'm talking about um, consistent, persistent, daily. And so um, I guess it was, it was good for the time being, and it's all up to climate. I, I think that for now, I, I need to um, look to other solutions for um, coping with this dry winter, this dry climate, and um, that, exabber, exabber, that exaggerates everything that I'm going through at the moment with my um, dry skin and my dry eyes. So I'm hoping that a switch will, will make things a little better. And um, if they do, I, I think I'm going to be very pleased um, because right now I'm not coping very well. And so um, I think the main issue here is to look at the differences between vegetarianism and veganism. Now, veganism is strict. I liked it. It's strict. Um, it forbids all animal protein, including fats. And when you get down to it, when you want to be that strict, why doesn't it forbid plant food sources as well? Um, but I'm getting really controversial about that. What I'm saying is, why be so strict in one department and not strict in another? So um, I, I like the starch solution the way it is. However, for the winter time, it is um, it's proven to me to be much too strict and harsh on my body. And so vegetarianism is a little more lenient. It, it does include, um, it's not as ethical, and even though it does abstain, it, it, you know, it demands that you abstain from animal proteins, it does incorporate the use of fats and some nuts, some seeds. It's a little easier to manage. Um, there'll be less carbs, um, more vegetables, less starches, so it's it's not a bad deal for me. And um, if I want, I won't uh, mind adding a bit of honey to my tea. And I won't have to feel very guilty about it. And as I recall, I, I remember doing um, some winters on um, uh, the vegetarian program, and I don't recall suffering to the point where I'm suffering right now. And so in order to uh, rectify um, the changes that my body needs at the moment, um, some of the vegetables that would help me with my eyes and um, maybe the dryness are um, carrots, broccoli, cauliflower, um, spinach, red sweet pepper, and probably a couple of others. But those are the main ones. Those are the ones that I'm going to try and focus on immediately since I'm stocked up on those. And um, I need to start seeing and feeling some sort of an improvement because, um, guys, what I'm going through is is like a nightmare. It's it's off and on, off and on. I, I don't know if it's exaggerated by the central air that keeps flipping off and on. It's driving me crazy. Or, or what, or if it's being triggered by a lack of liquids in my body, I, I'm trying to figure out what it is exactly that's tormenting the dryness in my eyes right now. Wow, um, I did that switch um, 
from room to room just to prove to myself that the sunlight is indeed really disturbing the feeling that I get in behind my eyes um, when I'm hitting direct sunlight. So, you know what, guys? If I had to go shopping or do any errands or go to that appointment that I had to cancel for today, I would have been in serious trouble because I cannot handle the double exposure. And that worries me because um, who can't handle looking at snow when they go out on a sunshiny day? Um, even if I, if it were overcast, uh, as it were yesterday, I came home, um, you know, so tormented by the dryness and in my eyes, they were burning intensely and it, it's not a normal reaction for me to have. I, I never have problems with my eyes, but this year, you know, I, I don't know where it, it began to come from. It started just before the holidays, and it's been getting progressively worse. So I really don't understand um, how I can, how else I can change things up if not through my diet. <laughs> I'm back. And so I remember telling you that um, my decision to um, shelve the uh, starch solution is um, actually, it's um, is because it's too focused on ethics and maybe religion uh, for food choices at the expense of my own better health. And so... Um, that would have been my only peeve that it, in fact, the starch solution left my, which is a vegan diet, left my skin and my entire body actually entirely devoid of um, any fats and um, entirely too dry. I, I don't function properly like this and it feels very weird. It feels like I'm a very, I'm a, a very old and um, cranky old machine. I probably am, but so I'm shelving this for now and I'm going to pick up where I left off with um, Neil Barnard's vegetarian diet. And so um, I want to say that my choice, my, deci my decision um, supports the fact that I am not really a true vegan at heart. And I, although I do really want to be, I'm not. I have to face facts. And so um, since I do eat animal protein and fats from time to time, and the fats are very essential for me. I need them to survive, to function properly. I don't know if it's going to be all it takes. I'll have to wait and see and then maybe visit with the doctor and do something about this dryness. Um, it's never been so bad um, or lasted for so long. I, I don't understand it. It's scary a little bit. Um, however, last winter I was suffering with um, chronic hypochloridia, which was a burning in my gums and not in my eyes. So, wow, I'm full of fire. <laughs> Anyway, um, my meat choices have always been very, very limited ever since I was a child. And over the decades, I have strictly cut out almost all beef except for a random burger. So um, even though I want to be a vegan and I try to be a vegan, this really um, convinced me that I cannot 
do it much longer. I need it to be, it makes more sense to do this maybe in the summer, fall, instead of the um, winter. You know what I mean? Maybe winter and spring is not for me to be a, a vegan. I have to sort of divide myself in between two different climates and two different eating styles. And it's not many people who actually come right out and, and figure that out. I don't know if that's the case for other people, but I know um, in my case, I absolutely need the fats that are provided for by this diet by Dr. Neil Barnard. And I, I've grown up with this um, ever since I was 40. <laughs> and so I, I put a lot of trust into this, just as much that I did with this one. But uh, it's time to, you know, turn back the clock a little and uh, put some more fat into my diet. So onward with this um, look at uh, vegetarianism and what it's really all about. Um, and you know, it's for me, it was very enlightening to look into history for an in-depth explanation. And for sure, it spells out controversy, no matter how you look at it. Um, for me, vegetarianism is not lacto-ovo. It's meatless. And that's basically it. Uh, Dr. Neil Barnard does not permit the use of dairy or real dairy from cow's milk um, in this diet. And I, I follow that. I don't eat eggs. I don't eat cheese. I, I don't drink milk. I can, you know, make do with tofu or animal um, almond milk or something like that. But um, I, I really am going to see that I don't miss any more nutrients because I wasn't being so careful before and it might have led me to um, not feel as great as I might have had I not been missing any supplements. So I'm going to make sure that I try to include everything. Um, boy, that's going to make a difference to tonight's dinner because I still don't know what I'm going to have. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, so ethics don't seem to play as big a part as in this diet as they did with the starch solution. And so I, I feel a little more relaxed and easy about this one. And um, But of course, my beef, um, pardon the pun, is um, not with the ethics of the starch solution, not with the McDougal doctors and their points of view but it is in the use of fat reduction as a technique to get ethical. No, my body doesn't understand that. My eyes, you know, I have to say in this room where I am now, my eyes are perfectly fine. I don't understand what it is. Um, it may be because it has extremely large windows, which of course are covered, I, I cannot figure it out, guys. I'm mystified, stupefied, amazed. I don't know. So um, I will fall back on the vegetarian program um, for my sudden switch, but it's a very necessary one right now. And so although I have said in the past that these two programs complement each other, um, it is only in the way that um, the vegetables are used and not in their common emission of animal products. So um, Dr. Neil Barnard doesn't omit all animal products. Meats, yes, not all animal products. Um, well, olive oil is not exactly an animal product. So um, in a way he does, in a way he doesn't. Um, I, I don't know if it can be substituted. I'll have to double check. But olive oil has always been my main staple. I don't really go to animal fats unless I'm on a fat eating binge. I, I like chicken skin. Um, I don't really look to animal fat. I, I prefer using olive oil. That's my 
sta uh, daily staple. I will put maybe a couple of teaspoons on my vegetable or uh, my vegetables, and I intend to do just that tonight. And so um, they're very different in the way that they treat animal products. And I'm not saying that he is more lenient, but he does supplement other things to take the place of animal products so that your body doesn't suffer this lack. And what I don't understand is why the starch solution does not allow for the salt and fat by this um, plant-based oil, olive oil. I, I have to look into that. So um, anyway, um, I do like that both of um, both of them omit dairy, which I don't really have much of a use for uh, unless it comes in cheese. I love cheese or ice cream. But um, in other words, you know, my, my food choices right now are based upon per personal preferences, not ethics, not religion, not politics, but me, me. And uh, sorry, guys, uh, I know that I, I feel like I let myself down. You know what I mean? I feel like I let myself down, but how long could I go on with this dryness in my body? I have to do something about it. And so um, I, I think that maybe we should have a, a, a look at the history and just look at all the um, different issues that came up in the past. And so, um, history. The earliest coined literary phrase, vegetarian, was used in 1838 by James Pierpont Greaves. Although it is, a, it is certain that vegetarianism did exist centuries before that. And so from 1841, um, continuously, the Industry Harmony College published its pamphlet um, titled The Healthian, and it revealed an appear, uh, um, a very consistent appearance of vegetarian in literature. And so I'm talking about North American literature and not any other literature. So as North Americans recognize vegetarianism, it was first um, introduced in the 1800s by this writer named Greaves. And so um, ethics, okay, ethics. Earlier records of vegetarianism from the 9th century BCE do exist and they reveal intolerance of violence toward living beings. In the 23rd and 24th centuries BCE, um, Ahimsa and Jain vegetarianism, religious um, Eastern religions, uh, vegetarianism was revived throughout the 8th to the 6th centuries BCE. Wow. Um, so it's very deeply rooted in religious practices. Wow. Um, but Indian culture had a, a very strict perspective of vegetarianism, and that was um, connected with nonviolence and I wish that that could spread to all aspects of every culture and society, not just this. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's a peaceful and very beautiful concept to adopt and probably quite possible back in the olden days, as they call it. Uh, maybe not as possible nowadays so many of us have been conditioned um, to eating meat and hunting and fishing. Okay, um, you need to survive, but um, in this day and age, I think we can choose whatever we want, can't we? And so um, one ancient fifth century text emphasized, emphasized um, avoiding and shunning meat like meat had a stigma even back then, um, and non-killing, no hunting, as virtuous, 
virtuous and it really specifies following vegetarianism as part of this customary practice of virtuosity. Wow, um, that is so um, inspiring. And um, I think that this really and truly leaves a huge, incredible um, cultural gap between Eastern and Northern American societies, between ancient times and modern times, um, you know, all, whatever you can think of, it really creates a huge cultural gap, a big rift. And um, we need to try to patch that up a little. Maybe food is not the only way that we can go about doing this, for sure. Um, so politics and religion. Uh, I have already exposed uh, a push for vegetarianism by medieval Japanese governments. And it would have been last week, guys, if you can just um, maybe go through them. And I, you know, I was pretty surprised myself to find that out. But um, even older than that is a vegetarianism, a, a diet that um, was followed by the ancient Greeks and Egyptians for medical and ritual purposes. And so what I'm picking up on here, guys, now is that food sanitation was a very, very big part of that choice and so close to it. Uh, I'm sure as I'm standing, just like the abstinence from pork uh, in, in Judaic traditions. Um, wow, food and religion, they're like that, aren't they? And so, um, Vegetarianism was practiced in ancient Greece and evidence that dates back from the 6th century BCE proves that. So um, it's in literature, it's in images, it's in graphics, it's on pottery, it's in the Bible, it's uh, in scrolls. Pythagoras, um, okay, before that, Orphism spread in Greece, and that's an ancient type of religion, and it promoted vegetarianism profusely. And so Pythagoras was part of that tradition, and he also promoted vegetarianism, but ate meat as well. And so maybe he wrote about it, but they didn't always practice what he preached, because um, everybody, you have to realize and understand that back then, it Eating meat was often part of um, ceremonial, um, how do I say this, rituals and celebrations. It was pleasing to the gods. I, I'm not sure specifically about meat eating, but I know that animal sacrifice and feasting was for the gods. So Take what you will from that. I don't know. Uh, quite frankly, it's interesting, very fascinating to me, and I would love to learn more about it. And I, I just thought of a wonderful answer I could have included in one of the essays I wrote about three or four summers ago. Um, but anyway, that's all water under the bridge now. And so um, vegetarianism was practiced even six centuries after Pythagoras, uh, between 30 and 50 BCE to 20 CE, something like that, um, in uh, Northern Thrace. And that particular tribe was a lacto ovo tribe who fed on honey, milk, cheese, and other dairy products. So, wow. That's fascinating, but I know that many of you won't think this is very interesting, but I do because I like to know what people thought and felt back then and how it shaped what we do now. So anyway, I have to get a drink of water. I'm absolutely obsessed with all this. Other controversies and... um. They're basically 
are centered around modern day diets that involve vegan and vegetarian foods. And so unlike vegans, vegetarians can boost their nutrient intake with supplements because vegetarianism, like veganism, does challenge those with deficiencies. And so avoidance of animal products supports the ethics. However, a lack of supplements that he endorses, I don't think a lot of it is smart because many of these um, ads are not based on nutritional needs, but the need to make sales. And so he has a valid, valid point in not pushing supplements. However, um, a lack of supplements uh, that is so common with many diets, not just veganism and vegetarianism, but, you know, people in general don't get enough B12. B12. B12 is the one vitamin that is so important yet so commonly um, deficient. You know what I'm saying? I don't think I said that properly, but I hope you understand what I mean. Um, Western vegetarian diets are so high in carotenoids. Um, that's what I need for my eyes. Low, they're low in omega-3 fatty acids and vitamin B12, which are both also essential for the human body. Um, high levels of dietary fiber, folic acid, vitamin C and E, and magnesium and low consumption of saturated fats are all beneficial for health. And so a good vegetarian diet should provide all nutrients in a meat and a, all nutrients in a diet. So what I'm saying is vegetarianism has a more attentive focus on supplements than does this this team right here and so but it's for a good reason i can understand the viewpoint but um protein intake is complemented by vitamins and anything that you don't get from the food menus themselves provided by this doctor he does recommend a vitamin B12 supplement. So I, I think he's got his butt covered in, in all the proper respects. And so hats off to you, Dr. Neil Bernard. And so um, protein intake, that's another controversy. So protein intake in vegetarian diets is lower than in others, but um, they do and are able to meet daily requirements. So uh, an established vegetarian diet um, provides sufficient protein intake with a variety of plant sources. Now, um, it just popped into my head that I could have a look at other vegetarian diets out there. And maybe it's time that I go for another stroll uh, around the bookstore. So that's something that I should put on my to-do list. And it would be very interesting to compare another vegetarian diet with these two right here. So iron, that's another big one. Um, what is so uh, prevalent in terms of detail when it comes to iron and vegetarian diets? Well, vegetarian diets contain very similar levels of iron as non-vegetarian -veget diets do, but with lower bioavailability than iron that is consumed from meats. That means their absorption is not working as quickly and as efficiently as with a meat diet. Absorption, in fact, is inhibited by other dietary elements. So... Um, to counteract this, um, vegetarian diets need an intake of vitamin C as maybe lemon juice or, or um, an orange, tomatoes, broccoli. All of these increase the absorption of iron. 
So foods um, that do contain iron are cashews, hemp seed, broccoli, black beans, lentils, oatmeal, raisins, spinach, uh, cabbage, lettuce, black-eyed peas, soybeans, um, cereal, chickpeas, tempe, tomato juice, thyme, sunflower seeds, molasses, whole wheat bread. Iron stores often tend to be lower in vegetables than with non-vegetarian diets. So iron deficiency is pretty common, but um, iron deficiency is pretty rare, like iron deficiency anema is very rare. So that's interesting to know. Vitamin B12. Okay, guys, listen up. Vitamin B12 is not present in plants, but naturally found in animal foods. And so lacto-arvo vegetarians can obtain vitamin B12 from dairy products and eggs. Not me. Vitamin B12 deficiency increases the risk of chronic diseases. Oh boy. Fatty acids. Plant-based or vegetarian sources of omega-3 fatty acids include walnuts, pumpkin seeds, soybeans, canola oil, kiwi, hemp seed, algae, chia seed, flax seed, ichiam seed, spinach, lettuce, cabbage, and purslane. What's purslane? Oh boy. Um, purslane contains more omega-3 than others. Olives and olive oil are other important plant sources of unsaturated fatty acids. See, I need that. Um, plant foods provide alpha linolenic acid, which the body uses to synthesize long chain and three fatty acids, EPA and DHA, which I've mentioned before. EPA and DHA are um, present in fish oils and oily fish like salmon. Vegetarians have lower levels of these two elements than do meat eaters. So um, spirulina is a good source of gamma linolenic acid, alpha linolenic acid, linolenic acid, stereodonic acid, icopacentanoic acid, docosahexanoic acid, and arachidonic Wait a minute. Arachidonic acid. Wow. Calcium. Calcium intake in a vegetarian diet can be properly implemented if the diet is well balanced. And so lacto-arvo vegetarians can obtain calcium from milk, yogurt, and cheese. Um, Non-dairy milk products fortified with calcium uh, do exist, like soy and almond milk and um, other milks as well. And they all contribute to calcium in a diet. Broccoli, bok choy, and kale do have calcium that's absorbed within the body. And it's absorbed well. So though calcium content is lower than in vegetables, it's lower in vegetables than in milk, the absorption is pretty good. So other foods are, um, other calcium en enriched foods are tofu, blackstrap, molasses, turnip greens, mustard greens, soybeans, tempeh, almonds, okra, dry figs, and tahini. Though calcium is in spinach, beans, beet greens, Swiss chard, they are not good sources of calcium, since that calcium will bind to oxalic acid and cannot be absorbed. Phytic acid in nuts, seeds, beans, um, all boost the calcium absorption rates in a human body. And lastly, vitamin D. Vitamin D is um, accessible via a body's generation upon sufficient and 
sensible exposure to UV rays in sunlight. And so, guys, sunlight, what I can't have right now. Um, products including milk, soy milk, and cereal grains do provide vitamin D. And so for people who don't get enough sun exposure, uh, a supplementation may be vital. So there you have it. That's essentially a vegetarian diet. And of course, you know that vegetarian diets focus on vegetables rather than meat and animal products, or in many cases, even dairy. So I hope this has been interesting for you guys. And I, I would really love to hear your input, um, especially on uh, how I changed from one diet to another um, due to my eye health. I really hope it works. And um, right now I'm frozen, so I need a nice hot cup of tea and uh, I'll show you what I'm having for supper. So stick around and uh, we'll see if anything else interesting comes up. I will definitely let you know and um, keep you updated. So don't go anywhere yet. So guys, um, I'm going to take a little break and prepare my dinner. My eyes are doing much better. Um, I guess the work day downstairs is over. And I don't know. I, I feel better. I know I don't look better, but I feel, <laughs> I feel better. And I'm sorry for forcing everybody to look at my makeup-free face today, but um, it's essential for my eye to heal a little. I don't want all that stuff on my eye. And so um, thank you for being understanding. So I'm going to make dinner. I'll show you what I'm having. One thing I know it won't include, that's potatoes. So I just wanted to remind everybody, I will be cheating by using a protein-based OXO cube. And I want to remind you also that I didn't complete my um, definition of the vegetarian um, meal program. And so I'll be going over you, uh, going over it with you um, after dinner. And so what I'm making is going to be very similar to what I made last night. And so um, just hold on and I'll get the process started.
So guys, um, that soup is mighty delicious with a drop of olive oil in it. And so um, I thought I would come back here and finish off the last little bit of our discussion. And first of all, I wanted to let you know that I didn't fully explain the definition of um, a vegetarian diet. Um, it also includes avo vegetarian, which does exclude meat, poultry, seafood, and dairy products, but it does allow eggs, and that I'm not. And um, lacto-avo vegetarian diets exclude meat, fish, and poultry, but do allow dairy products as well as eggs. And so um, I don't fall into either of those two categories, but um, I strictly um, omit animal protein, dairy, and eggs. So that's me. Then that is what I meant to say earlier when I was trying to describe um, the definition of a vegetarian diet. And of course, a vegetarian diets also um, include um, fruits and vegetables, among other food groups, which I'll get to in a couple of seconds. Um, so I remember when I was telling you that I didn't know what purslane was. Um, it's supposed to be some sort of herb or um, weed. And so um, I did manage to find out that, um, hold on, I did manage to find out that it is sort of, um, it's, I guess you could call it a, an herb or a weed that grows in certain parts of the world. Um, it contains so many vitamins and minerals and omega-3 fats. I, I cannot believe it when I read about it. Purslane is an herb that contains vitamin A, omega-3 fats, um, thiamine, which is vitamin B1, riboflavin, which is vitamin B2, niacin, which is vitamin B3, and vitamin B6, which is folate, folate or vitamin B9, I should say, and um, vitamin C, and alpha linolenic acid, and is, which is an essential omega-3 fatty acid. So, vitamin A, thiamine, B2, B3, B6, B9, C, omega-3 fatty acid, did I say vitamin A? <laughs> Riboflavin, niacin, um, alpha linolenic acid. Wow, that's an awful lot. And um, it, it, it must be very healthy because um, it contains all of those vitamins and minerals. So I, I imagine it must be very good for the health. And so um, let's move on a little. And um, I think the last one that we mentioned, the last vitamin that we mentioned was vitamin D. Now let's move on to um, a mineral, which is zinc. Zinc is essential for um, human health. And um, in order to uh, receive enough zinc as uh, for your daily requirements, you need to make sure you need um, eat enough legumes, um, chickpeas, black beans, red beans, um, lentils, stuff like that, to obtain the required uh, amounts of zinc in your body. Okay, so now let's move on to vegetarian foods and exactly what they are. And so um, vegetarian foods contain several food groups, and those are nuts and seeds, dairy substitutes, oils, beverages, fruits, grains, and legumes. And so um, what I wanted to tell you was that um, nuts and seeds are limited. Like they're, they're not, you can't really overstock on those. Um, they're, not, they're not the best thing to eat too much of. So you have to, again, you have to really be careful of the amounts. And even 
so that some people do not digest them very well. So that's another issue. But um, anyway, what kinds of seeds and nuts? All right. Um, walnuts, macadamia nuts, pecans, pistachios, almonds, cashews, Brazil nuts, hemp seeds, chia seeds, sunflower seeds. Um, I imagine pumpkin seeds. I'm not sure. Nut butter and flax seeds. And um, so I mentioned nuts and seeds, dairy substitutes, oils, beverages, fruits, grains, and legumes. Those are all the vegetarian foods that we're going to look at right now. And so dairy substitutes. What's a dairy substitute? Well, first you have to decide what kind of a vegetarian you're going to be. And if you do decide to omit dairy products, soy milk, almond milk, oat milk, hemp milk, cashew milk, dairy-free yogurt, dairy-free cheese, those are all considered to be dairy substitute, substitutes. They didn't mention tofu, but uh, I imagine it would be. Um, okay, oils. Now, the only oil that I actually use, although I do have, I own so many oils, I usually use them on my hair sometimes, like coconut oil, um, nut oil, and stuff like that. Okay, the oils that you can use in the vegetarian diet are olive oil, avocado oil, walnut oil, flaxseed oil, and coconut oil. So... I have a few of those, um, but I only actually ever digest or ingest um, olive oil. All right, beverages, water, coffee, tea, mineral water, and non-dairy milk, which I've just read to you. Um, fruits, fruits are a big part of the vegetarian diet, but not a lot of fruit, not big copious amounts. You want to watch that sugar intake, right? And so um, fruits include apples, oranges, the common everyday run-of-the-mill fruits, pears, berries, bananas, pineapple, mango, grapes, and avocado. Not big on avocado, at least not Dr. Neil Barnard. Very little bits, um, if any. Vegetables. Here we go. Leafy greens, carrots, potatoes, which reminds me I need carrots. Um, asparagus, turnips, broccoli, cauliflower, cucumbers, radishes, bell peppers, cabbage, tomatoes, summer and winter squash. Uh, they didn't mention zucchini or green beans. Well, I, I imagine it's all part of it, right? Um, grains. Rice, corn, quinoa, amaranth, buckwheat, bulgur, barley, oatmeal, pasta, crackers, popcorn. Now we're talking. Cereals, bread, and bread that is made without milk or butter like i make it and so tonight guys i'm going to have some popcorn i'm going to make my own wow it's been a long time well actually no that's not quite true but let's not talk about that legumes this is a big one guys listen up soybeans tempeh oh tofu is like a protein and not a dairy why do I always forget that? Tofu, miso, lentils, black beans, garbanzo beans or chickpeas, kidney beans, peas, peanuts. Peanuts, remember that. I have to buy peanuts. Carrots and peanuts. Pinto beans, navy beans. So there you have it. That is the true definition of a full vegetarian diet. Follow that and you won't really have any problems whatsoever, um, especially trying to 
uh, get filled up enough so that you don't get hungry. Man, I wish I had some peanuts now. Not that I'm hungry, but um, I, I miss this diet. You know what I mean? I really, really miss it. So um, health benefits. Listen up. It lowers blood pressure, decreases asthma symptoms, and not asthma, asthma symptoms. Um, I don't know if it decreases asthma. It doesn't say that. Um, promotes bone health, supports gut health, um, weight loss, reduce cancer risk, and it's more affordable. Well, we'll have to see about that. Um, downsides. What are the negative aspects of a vegetarian diet? Okay. Um, the downsides are insuffic insufficient protein intake, insufficient vitamin intake, um, mineral deficiency, and omega-3 fat deficiencies. Restricted foods, of course, are red meat, poultry, fish, and shellfish, dairy products for many, many vegetarians, like myself, baked goodies, like fatty breads and buttery pastries made with milk and butter. Mm -mm, don't eat those, at least not when you're on a vegetarian diet. <laughs> um, it could even make you sick going from vegetarian. I'm not talking about winking, you know what I mean? Um, I know that when I followed the vegetarian program, I, I would eat something fatty or greasy or maybe even just plain bread and butter and I would get sick. Meat and dairy derived food additives like my oxo cube tonight. It was a beef cube and um, I, I had it anyway. I do have vegetable bone broth, but I didn't feel up to it. Okay, meat and dairy derived food additives such as lard. Okay, no lard. Gelatin, um, casin, whey, carmine, other items, animal based broths like chicken soup, um, pate, like a, a, a spread, fish sauce. Certain omega-3 supplements, non-dairy creamers, um, like the one I'm going to use when I buy it tomorrow, and um, various salad dressings. So, guys, um, that is it for a vegetarian diet. That is the definition and the history and the... Um, characteristics and the aims everything about vegetarian diets and so please if you want me to cover something that i didn't mention let me know in the in the description box below because i think it's really important to get all these different diets and food groups and everything all out into the open and and dissect them so that we know what they actually are and what they're good for right and so um, we have to naturally know what defines, say, for instance, a, a, a vegan diet or a vegetarian diet or a, a regular meat eating diet. Um, I think that's one I'm not going to cover. We all know what that is. <laughs> um, it's a delicious diet that I love following. And believe it or not, I'm ready for a piece of meat. I, I don't know what it is, guys. Anyway. Um, I really do hope that you have enjoyed today's content. It was a, a bit of a long one, but I'm, I'm glad that we covered all of this. And um, this was an important one for me, especially because I am returning as of today back to the vegetarian program that I haven't followed since summertime. Um, before my lemonade cleanse, or maybe after my lemonade cleanse. So um, it's important to me that I get back on track the right way. And so what better way than with a great big review like this? And so um, if anybody out there knows of any great vegetarian diets, can you please let me know? Because I do want to review several different kinds. I just don't know where to start looking. 
And so um, anyway, everybody, I hope that you've had a wonderful day. Um, thank you so much for watching. And uh, please don't forget to smash them.